Welcome, everybody. I have a very special guest today. She's a young Iberian scientist, passionate about innovation, immersive technologies, and science communication. She is the founder and president of Tech for Science, a nonprofit organization dedicated to democratizing university, sorry, access to science and technology for high school and university students in the Ivory Coast. She has a strong focus on empowering young girls. She's committed to promoting science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. She leverages augmented reality, virtual reality, 3D animation, and artificial intelligence to increase immersive and interactive educational experiences. She develops innovative learning content from scientific 3D modeling to realistic animations, illustrating complex concepts in physics, biology, and chemistry. As a master's student in physics and trained in artificial intelligence, she combines scientific expertise with technological creativity to make science more engaging and accessible. A frequent speaker and panelist, she addresses topics related to science, emerging technologies, and digital education. Her vision is to position the Ivory Coast as a hub of scientific innovation in West Africa and to inspire a new generation of African scientists, particularly women. She has over 13,000 followers on LinkedIn and an engaged audience on TikTok. She actively shares her projects, insights, and initiatives to promote science and technology as key drivers of sustainable development in alignment with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And we're going to be meeting her right after this. Thinking about moving to Mexico? I'm Scott Patton, Elder Nomad, and this is Escape to Mexico Now, your go-to podcast for everything from residencies to healthy living, local culture, and the best places to call home south of the border and around the world. Grab a burrito and join us. So we're not escaping to Mexico. We're escaping to the Ivory Coast. Roxanne, so happy to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. I'd like to ask you a couple questions about immersive technologies. So um, what exactly is immersive technology? Thank you. So immersive technology means a set of tools that make you feel inside the experience. This includes virtual reality with headset and also augmented reality with phones or tablets, where digital objects or 3D objects are put in a pair in the real life. There is also wow. mixed reality, which combines both augmented and virtual reality. In short, with immersive technologies, students can see and touch science in 3D instead of only reading in books. So I think it's good. Thank it's you. like a real experience, eh? Yes. <laughs> so what are some of the other benefits for students? Okay, so it's, it's real, they can see it, they can work with it, and as opposed to having to think about it. Uh, what are some of the other benefits? Oh, there is a lot of benefits. You see, um, there is more understanding of science because a student can see and touch science is 3D and not just in theory. There is also a more memory because they remember longer and also a more participation because even shy students can get engaged. There is also an equal access to education because one computer or one augmented reality app can be shared by many students. Thank you. Oh, very cool. So do they make people and young people in particular more motivated to learn? Yes, of course. You know, people already love phones, games, and visuals. So if we make the learning look like a gaming or an adventure, they feel more curious, more comfortable, and more engaged to learn science. In Cote d'Ivoire, there is a lot of students don't like science too much because they find it hard and difficult. So with yeah. immersive technology, you can create safe and fun experiment at school and during classes. Imagine during a physics class, 
a boring physics class and people can see a free day launch of a rocket. And I bet they will be more engaged to learn and they will be more excited to to do sciences. So right, right. So yes. how would you recommend a teacher use this in the classroom? Oh, it's very easy. Firstly, with tablets or phones, and you can have AR app inside and do experiments. There is also a VR, immersive VR experiment with headsets. And the teacher oh. can also put a QR code on an image of a scientific tool. And then the students scan it, the 3D object take a life above the book. So it's very fun. And during the, the classes, he can organize a small group of, stu uh, of students while some are doing experiments, others are taking notes and discuss about the experience in progress. And wow. I want to say that even schools with no material, just one device can be shared on a screen for all. Right. So this is something that really opens up science to everybody in your country. Yes. So how do you see these technologies changing education in developing countries? Oh, that it can, it, it can change. In Africa, especially in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, school faces a lot of problems. There is too many students for a lot, a lack of laboratories, a lack of equipment. But I think augmented reality or virtual reality can solve it. For example, uh, the creation of a virtual lab is more cheaper than a real lab. You see, and with a phone, a, a kid or a student in a rural school can have access to the same quality of education. Uh, that a, a, a boy or a student or a girl in a big city or in a rich school. So it will contribute to bring equality access of education in Cote d'Ivoire. So I think it is, it is good. Thank cool. You. Now, let's suppose someone's really keen on physics and they have the app and they're working through everything on physics. When they go home, could they be continuing their education at home as opposed to just doing it at school? Yes, at home you can have, for example, a virtual lab where you in Cote d'Ivoire can have access to the same contents with, for example, a kid in New York or Canada. So they will also have forum with a lot of students come from the worldwide and different cultures and different languages also. So I think it will bring um, people to work together and learn together, create together and that will be good for, for everybody. So I think, right. yes, yes. So do you see a lot of inequality in education in Cote d'Ivoire? A what, excuse me? Do you see a lot of inequalities in education? Yes, yes, a lot. Uh, especially in the rural zone schools, they don't have access to technology, you see. And I think with immersive technology, like I told you, a boy in a village can have access to the same quality of education, but it will be possible if only uh, the technology is shared. Uh, I think authorities, government, NGOs, and teachers should share tools with everybody so even rural schools can have access to the technology. And I, I think it is also important to give them internet devices and training for teachers. And then massive technology can bring equality on our system. Yes. Oh, cool. So looking to the future, uh, what do you think the classroom is going to look like in a year, five years, 10 years with these technologies? Oh, good question. Amazing amazing. Uh, I also think that they will also have the traditional learning method and teaching methods, but with a lot of technology. So, for example, in a classroom in Abidjan Cote d'Ivoire, I think each student can have his own headset of VR, and after a, a school class of science, they could have VR experiment. For example, in geography, you can have a VR travel, 
to, for example, going to the desert, forest, or visit another country's continent, or in a class of physics, have simulation of a space travel. And also in chemistry class, have a virtual lab where you're going and doing some experience. So I think that will be very, very cool. And I'm really happy to be part of this innovation to bring it in my country. And I hope people will like, use it, and follow my vision for my country. This would be a good time to uh, ask you if somebody wanted to support you in, in your vision, what are some of the things that they could do? So firstly, uh, listen, uh, ask questions. Uh, don't be shy to ask questions because a lot of people don't know it. So when you see immersive technology, they're like, oh, what is it? So you talk about virtual reality, augmented reality, something very new for everybody. So they don't really know. But uh, I have to tell them to don't be shy to ask and to try. And when you try, you see the importance of this technology and the benefits you can use it at your school, for your courses, conference, and a lot of things, just not in science. That's, that's also be good in industry, um, for startups, uh, publicity, and a lot, a lot of things. The mountain and virtual reality are going um, quickly, going, uh, be strong, and I think we will have to explore this for our development, not even uh, at school. Right. It's amazing the changes that are occurring. Yes. So how can people get a hold of you? What would be the best way to get in touch? Excuse me? What is the best way for people to get a, in touch with you if they want to talk to you some more about this technology? Oh, okay. I will let you my, my link uh, of my LinkedIn account and the TikTok account of our association, also my email. So anybody who wants to learn more and know more about us can contact us directly from this link. Okay, great. So um, any last words about immersive technology? Uh, yes, immersive technology uh, are the future. So you should start to learn it now. Uh, it's like AI. In the past, when you, you told about AI, people are, was like, oh, what is it? But now we can see that AI is in our life of every day. So I think immersive technology uh, will, will have the same impacts. So you should um, train yourself now and start to make some research about the subject. Cool. What I'd like to do now is switch a little bit from immersive technologies. And a lot of my viewers and followers uh, know very little about the Ivory Coast. So I'd like to ask you a few questions about your country so people can uh, understand what's going on there and hopefully come and visit. Okay, <laughs> with pleasure. So how would you uh, describe the spirit of the people in the Ivory Coast, particularly to someone who's never been? Oh, our young people are very friendly, handsome, and full of energy. They like to share, and they welcome strangers like their family. Fun, good music, and good food are always present here in Cote d'Ivoire. So I recommend that you to come here, visit our country. Um, that's It's on my plan for next year. This year, I have to start heading... I'm in South uh, Africa, and I have to start heading back home for for Christmas. Well, so, okay, we are we are waiting you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is a tradition or custom a custom in the Ivory Coast that outsiders don't maybe know about or misunderstand? Uh, yes, I think it is a mask and dance culture. In our village, they take it very seriously, and for them, it's a, it's the meaning of respect and culture, but uh, I think that outsiders, some outsiders think it is just for entertainment, but there is a lot of things inside that they don't know about. So right. the mass culture. Some are cool. scared. For example, in some villages, you can see a mask move alone. <laughs> so people <laughs> ask, what is it that, what is it that? So it is our culture and we are very proud to have this culture in our country. Cool. Describe what a typical day would be like in Abidjan. 
So firstly, in the morning, people go to work or school, and the street is full of taxis, cars, motorbike, and for lunch, people used to eat a local food that that name is Atiki. Atiki. Mm. Fish. Yes, we like eat it in Cote d'Ivoire. It's the favorite African a Cote d'Ivoire food. So in the evening, after work or school, people have to go in a place that named Maki. It's like a small restaurant with music, good ambiance, and mm. what people go to share and discuss, over watch TV, drink, big party, like you see, and it's, it's a typical day. In, Cool. I'm, <clears throat> you're making me hungry. I'm thinking with all that good food. Oh, you will eat Atiki. Yes. So um, what would you say is one thing that visitors to uh, the Ivory Coast uh, wouldn't expect to experience that, th that they do experience? Uh, when they come here? Oh, okay. The surprise is that when people come here for the first time, they are surprised to see how tall our buildings and the technology, fashion, people. So I think this is the, the, the most thing that surprised people the most. So it's quite a modern society. Yes. Yeah, awesome. And you're right, That's we have a very uh, old opinion of, or uh, yeah, opinion of what goes on in Africa, and it's not at all true. Uh, I think so, this is the whole Africa. So, uh, no Africa is more modern and more beautiful, and people are um, more modern. But there is also a mix of traditional and modern. So, it's good. It's very beautiful. You should come here to see. I'm going to do that. So, yes. what issues matter most to the young people today in your country? Oh, there are. Interested about a lot of things: politics, um, gastronomy, travel, work, and also freedom and peace. Mm. Awesome. All right. Well, Ruth, I want to thank you for taking Roxanne. I want to thank you for taking time out of your uh, busy day. And uh, before we go, is there any last comments you want to make, either about your country or about immersive technology? See um, about my country, uh, just good things. Just good things. You can ask even to other African countries. They will say the same about my country. We are very friend friendly and so. And about immersive technology, like I told, I think it's a revolution for our so scholar systems, and I think people should take them to do their courses. So that's uh, all for what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.